it occurred to me that I might be able to give you a useful, hopefully, demonstration of definition in a microphone visually. I've been looking at and comparing microphones and lenses, as some of you may know. And I have here a couple of filters for lenses. And they're called uh, Softar. Now, I'm going to zoom in and show you. These filters attach to the front of the lens. And I don't know if you can see. They've got some sort of pimpling on them. They're clear, but they're not entirely. Does that help? I don't know. It just blinds you, I think. And here's another, which is uh, number two, I believe. What these did, or do, they were back from the film days. They tended to degrade a lens in a certain way to give a softer appearance, mostly for portraits. We could use it for landscapes and dreamy stuff, what have you. I looked online and somebody said this, this they're diffusion lenses, if you like. So it says the highlights bleed or bloom into the shadows and there's reduced contrast and softer skin tones. So that's what they're about. I thought then if I wedged them on the front of that, they'll just fit inside the lens hood and balance them in there. Then it might be worth seeing what they do. I shall use the number one first, followed by the number two, which is slightly uh, more powerful in that regard. And then finally, I'll screw the two together. So you've got the equivalent kind of, of a number three. These are actual soft are made by Zeiss in Germany. Good quality ones. So that's the plan. It'll be interesting for me as well to see what these do. And you can imagine what foam and the mesh and all sorts of stuff in front of the microphone might have a similar audio effect. This is with the soft R1 in place. Uh, difficult for me to see the screen's a little way off. Kind of things you might be looking for is maybe a little bit of glow around the white, the highlights, might sort of bleed the definition between this and the background, which is darker, and uh, the grey and the black here maybe. Also, my skin and my beard. The idea that it is that it doesn't reduce actual sharpness, but just, as the guy says, allows highlights to bleed and bloom into the shadow blacks. So that's the Soft R1. I'm going to remove that, replace it with the Soft R2. This is the Soft R2. Soft R2. And I can't see any difference, but then it is a fair way off. Uh, looking on the screen. But it will be interesting when I edit. Okay, that's that. Now I'm going to put the two together and see what gives. Here we are with the two of them together, so kind of the equivalent of a Soft R3. And uh, <laughs> once again, uh, I can't tell, but the idea was to be looking on screen. Anyway, I'll remove all of them now, go back to as is. Well, there we are. If, uh, if that works, then it maybe gives an idea of what um, a high, this is without anything, it does look a bit different. Uh, what a high definition microphone might be like and some of those where they bleed one note into the next because it can't really move quickly enough. Maybe you like that. However, it seems to me that the thing to do is to have a good lens and then use the filter if you need it and not if you don't or use one or two. And then I'm wondering likewise with microphones, might it not be the way forward now? to uh, have a high definition microphone, full bandwidth, flat, and just introduce at the press of a button, the preset, which will degrade it or do what you want. 
Hope that's been of some interest, at least. And, uh, be seeing you.